Do little things really matter? You bet. Hello again everyone, I'm Eli's dad with Project Eli, where we educate, we lead, and we inspire. Today I want to talk to you about an event that happened to me this morning that wasn't really an event, it was just a run-of-the-mill experience but it gave me pause to do some deep thinking. And my thinking was concerning what little things do people do in their business, in their lives? I mean, do you stop and think about what are the important little things that I do right, that I need to do right, in order to become a success? This, it all started out today because I needed to have my oil changed in my car. And you know, in today's times, I, you don't do that, I don't do that as often as, as you, you normally would do it because you're not driving anywhere, all right? As in these pandemic times, you try and minimize, you know, the places that you're going, so on and so forth, especially during the winter, especially in the Chicago area. You know, so instead of thinking like I get 20 miles to the gallon, you're thinking I get 20 days to the gallon, all right? I mean, it, it, you don't fill up so often, so as a result, you're not getting your oil changed. So anyway, I'm, I went in there early. I wanted to be the first one, so I wouldn't have to wait. I hate waiting. And also didn't want it to be too crowded. I went in to get my oil changed, and I'm sitting down in the little waiting area that they have, and a couple of people come in, and they're wearing masks like I am I'm wearing my mask except one guy is wearing his mask and it only goes up to here his nose is exposed another guy comes in he's wearing his mask except his mask is down here and I'm thinking to myself you know we're right at the end of the pandemic we're getting shots we're creating herd immunity can't we pay close vigilance to what we have to do for just a little while longer, the little thing of putting your mask over your nose, covering your face, you know, by now you should be used to it. It's like buckling your seatbelt. You get in your car, you don't even think about it, boom, you put on the buckle, it's done deal. That little thing can save lives. When they first came out with seatbelts, people, oh, I got the wheel to protect me, and there was arguments and so on. Today's times, it's a no-brainer. People just go in, it's part of like getting into your car. First thing you do is you buckle that seatbelt. Why can't we do the same thing with the masks? I want to talk to you about the little things though. In your business, in your life, what little things are important? I want to tell you some of the things that help me make decisions, okay? There's this one place that I like to go to as a restaurant and what they do is they serve as, you know, you go in, you sit down, you're looking at the menu, and they bring over a big a piece of garlic. They've cut it in half. It's been roasted in the oven. And they have a little knife with it, and they have butter. And the butter is soft. It's easy to spread. It's not like, you know how when they give you the butter and it's like ice, and you say to yourself, my goodness, can't they even do the butter right? And then the bread is fabulous. It's fantastic. And you say to yourself, wow, the little details. That's what, And the food is good there, but one of the things I really look forward to is, oh boy, I'm gonna have the bread, the garlic, and the soft butter, it's terrific. Another thing, little details. Eli, when you're passing the ball, the difference between having the person you're passing the ball to receive it up here and receive it down here is the difference between scoring a basket and not scoring a basket, winning a game, and not winning a game. Pay attention to those little details. Pass the ball into the into the shooter's shooting pocket. Another one at the restaurant. I do a lot of time in restaurant, but you know what? I haven't been. I, I've had I've been vaccinated twice, so now I felt a little a little brave. You know, I'm going to go to a restaurant at a time when it's not crowded and and do that. I'm you know still trying to maintain my vigilance. So I went to this restaurant, and the waitress was there pouring coffee. I would drink the coffee and, and just as I was getting to the point, 
she need, I needed more coffee, boom, she was there. Or when the water, you're drinking water, sometimes you go in or you're getting iced tea or whatever it is you're drinking and the waitress comes around or the wait person comes around at just the right time to make sure that your glass or your cup is full. Don't these people realize that doing that increases their tips? It, it's it's a, such a little thing, but it's an important little thing. In the business world, one of the things that I feel separated me from other people in the sales game was when I had a new clothes, I spent time and memorized the clothes. I would say it into a tape recording and then I would listen to it over and over and over again while I was driving so that when it came time to say it, I didn't have to think about it. The words just automatically came out of my mouth because of muscle memory. The same thing that happens with you when you're singing a song that you're following on the radio that you've heard a million times. Why not take that concept and apply it to something important in your business that you can memorize so that you don't have to think about it. Then you're a much better performer when you do that. How about the simple chore of simply saying please and thank you. Even if you're the boss at somebody's at work, you know, say, oh, I need do this, do that. If you just say, would you please do that? Would you please do that? Or thank you for doing that. I appreciate that. That little thing adds so much, I have found, to the people that you're working with that it, it's a unifying force. It, it makes people like and respect you more when you have the courtesy to say please and thank you. How about simply smiling at people, smiling with your eyes? When you see people, even people you don't know, you know, you pass people in the grocery store, give them a smile, or you, people that you have sort of a naughty acquaintance with, hey, how you doing? You know, give them that smile. Remember to smile with your eyes so that it's sincere. People see that. It's a little detail. One of the most important ones in my life, and I strongly recommend it, for you, Eli, and everybody else, is to give yourself that quiet thinking time every single day. Five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. At the beginning of your day, stop. Give yourself that quiet thinking time. Close your eyes. Allow the corridor to open between you and the infinite mind. Give messages, receive messages. Let your subconscious go to work. That all happens from quiet thinking time. It's such a little thing. Five minutes of your time, ten minutes of your time. It's time that you spend playing video games or watching this or watching that or doing stuff that it's like so unnecessary. This is such a little detail. Give yourself that quiet thinking time. One of the gentlemen that I used to work with, one of the people that was a mentor for me, a gentleman named Dan Less, was a pretty sharp dresser. You know, and as you can tell from your time you spent with me, that's not exactly one of my strongest points. But there was a time when I was, you know, managing an office, a divisional vice president with the company, and you got to dress up, you got to look nice, you got to, you know, look the role. And he said to me, you know, Eli's dad, I'll give you the secret to being a sharp dresser. First of all, make sure your clothes fit, that's number one. But number two, the secret is the accessories, is having the little tie clip, is having the pocket handkerchief, having the, the tie bar, those types of things. That's what makes somebody look sharp. That's what makes somebody stand out. The vest, you know, have, wearing a vest. All of these little details were things that he, Dan pointed out to me that were critical. You know, that helped me quite a great, a great deal. Remembering somebody's name. The most important thing that a person wants to hear is, guess what? Their own name. Such a little thing, but it's really a big thing. Do you take the time in your business, do you take the time in your personal life, your social life, to remember somebody's name? Let's go back to the restaurant. There's this one restaurant we went, I used to go to called, the, the, I used to call it the non-ambience place because it wasn't particularly, you know, a pretty place, but the food was outstanding. And the thing that they did that was so great, 
is they in the in the old days is they would have one of the one of the chefs in the back. You take the potatoes. You see him there. You know, taking the skin off the potato off the potatoes and then slicing the potatoes like with the Vegematic, You know, into the, into the big thick French fries. And then when you got your French fries, they were boiling hot. And they were thick, and they were delicious, and they're so much better than the little shoestring fries that you get. I mean, they paid attention to detail on these fries. Is that an important thing? It was for me. I'm talking about it. I remember it. How about when you call up a company, and they say, you know, if if it's Tuesday, press three. You know, if you want to speak to somebody who's got blue eyes, press four. How important is it? to talk to a real living human being. It's a little thing, but it matters. If I have my choices of companies, I will call the company where there's a human being on the other end of the line. I don't want to be talking to a machine. Little things. How about calling somebody instead of texting them? And I'm, I'm talking, you know, there's sometimes you want to text, I text people, all right, but the point is, on a birthday, instead of saying happy birthday, or instead of going on Facebook and saying happy birthday, how about just taking the little extra step of taking the time and picking up the phone and calling them and talking to them and having a laugh with them instead of just sending a text. It means so much more to the, at least it does to me, it means so much more to this person than it does just receiving a text. Little things, little things. Going into a store. Don't you hate it when you go into a store and you're waiting in line and you're there and you're in line for like 20 minutes. All right, 20 minutes isn't that long, but like, weren't they expecting customers? Did they not want people to come in? Did they not want to collect money today? What's the deal? I want to go into a place where they have people at the register so that I don't have to wait in line. I know in today's times you have the self-checkout, but even the self-checkout gets super crowded. They don't have enough people. Uh, they don't have enough machines. All right, so you're there, you're waiting in line. One of the things as a business, put yourself in the position of the customer, of the patron. If you were a customer, if you were a patient, do you want to be waiting in line? Or is one of the things you admire about going into that store, the fact that you go in, they have what you want, you're in, you're out, boom, next. It's a little thing. And I'm going to end this. I mean, there's a whole bunch of little things. I invite you to, in the comment section, to send me some of the little things that are important to you in either your personal life, your business life, whatever. And I'm going to end with one that's very, very important. Do you say I love you to the people that matter the most in your life? Eli, I love you. And because we'll never end a meeting on a philosophical note, this is just a little thing, let's get out there and charge! I'm Eli's dad.